Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly and I'm a mixed media artist who specializes in gouache paint, ink work, and sometimes I do digital painting. This will be a part three to this crazy possum painting I'm doing with heart-shaped glasses on. If you would like to see the rest of the process regarding the painting part of the actual possum, I will link those videos somewhere in the video slash description slash whatever. So in this week's video, I'll be showing you how I do the ink work little daisy border I decided to do. So there's plenty to get into. How about I just get right into telling you how I'm drawing and then I'll get onto the parts where I wanna ramble about stuff later, like the specific materials I use, how I protect ink work in my paintings and also the inspiration behind this painting. So something I do before I go in and start the whole drawing process is I like to take off the cap of the pen and then I get a scrap piece of paper and just roll the pen on its side. And basically all this does is if there's any splotches of ink where it's starting to pile up, you really don't want that to make a big splatter all over where you're trying to make <laughs> very delicate gradients. As you can see how I'm doing the shading on each of these petals, it's a very gradual gradient, it's very soft. That's why I like using these types of pens. They give a drier feel, so you're able to do a very light feathery touch versus something that's more inky like a felt tip. I like to roll it on its side, get the excess ink off, and I do that every so often as I'm drawing. Then after that, I like to test out a few fast lines, and I try doing this method where I make as many parallel lines as fast as I possibly can just to get my hand in the practice of that motion. If you open a new pen, sometimes Sometimes, you know, you gotta loosen it up a bit <laughs> and you just gotta practice it. That helps it glide a lot faster and smoother. That used to be something I thought people who were like, oh, I'm an artist. I thought it was just something people did to look fancy. And then I went to art school and that was literally our homework one time. And I was like, that's it. Okay, I'm gonna go ham. And I did like so many sketchbook pages of just doing that. And, um, it's it's legit. I mean, sometimes I can get a little stubborn. I'm like, nah, that doesn't work. And then I'll just deal with ink splotches on my drawings for no reason. And then finally I'm like, hey, maybe, I, maybe there's something to that. Maybe you should try that out, Carly. And then I do and I'm like, wow, it works. Would you look at that? <laughs> So I'm here to tell you it's legit. I don't know why I thought people were out here wasting their time trying to look fancy drawing random lines for no reason. And as you can see, so I worked on this whole daisy. Don't worry, I know I talked through the entire process of this daisy, but there's plenty more that I'm going to get started on. I just really wanted to underline the prep work because it makes a huge difference. As you can see though, I'm getting super gradual, soft, soft gradients with this pen. And I think just the border took me three and a half hours. And you know, in relation to how long my other artwork takes me, that's not very long at all. But still, you don't want three hours of hard work to go by when you're like at the end of it and then you get an ink splotch. So it's very important to do it throughout the whole drawing process. And now the fancy fast lines that I talked about earlier, this is making a great segue into how I'm even shading these petals. So those fast lines I talked about, they didn't just help with not only cleaning off the pen, getting your hand used to the momentum, but it's the foundation in which you're going to shade everything. So doing very, very light lines is the key to building up a very soft gradient. Something I like to do personally is I like to start in areas where I know it's going to have the deepest, darkest value of shadows going on. And I like to start with a really dark end of the line. So I'll have my hand pressed down harder. There will be a lot more pressure and then I flick it out. And practicing that line really helps so that you have more control and can gauge like what amount of pressure does a certain amount of darkness, delivers more ink, things like that. 
again, make a huge difference. So when I do that flicked out line, basically it makes a high contrast, shorter gradient. So you can see where the petals are attached to the eyeball in the center of the flower. It's obviously going to be darker there because it's going into the shadow and um, you obviously want that area to be darker. So I will start there and then flick out and I will arch it out along the contours of the petals and I do that shading all across the shape of the contour in which the petals are folding. Now I know I've talked about this in like any other video involving ink. You want to shade around the contours. For this method that I'm doing personally, if you don't care about that, then don't do it. But here's how I do it and why. So shading around the contours means if you're shading a sphere, you're going to arch those shaded lines around the arches or natural shape and form of the object. What this does is it gives it a lot more dimension and a smoother gradient that just looks more realistic. However, if you don't care about that, that's fine. <laughs> that you could also just shade with straight lines, crisscrossed, like cross hatching. It's a totally different look. I'm not really going for that vibe. It gives a more etched appearance, which can be cool. Uh, sometimes I do crisscross lines for shading, but that's usually when I want it to get super, super dark. And I'll do that more in areas where like around the eyeball I'm shading right now, I'm kind of doing that just so that I can build up the layers and intensity of those darker shadows. But in general, I do the contouring method. But if you wanna do the etched method, go right ahead. Basically, you would just use cross hatching straight lines to shade rather than what I'm doing, which is following the form of each object. So I'm doing a similar process for the daisy leaves. And what I wound up doing here is I just sketched out the shading and gradual lines in the direction of the growth of each leaf. And I did the same thing with the petals where I did mostly lines that were all going in the same direction from the center outward. I'm doing the same thing with the leaf. I'm starting from the center of the stem and working it out in each section of the leaf making the shading kind of fan out to the natural shape where like the veins grow in the leaf. It just gives a little bit more of a natural appearance. And in the areas where there's fur hanging over the ballpoint floral work, I'm not drawing these flowers and leaves with just a harsh edge. What I'm doing is I'm making strokes back into the fur so that later on when I go back in with gouache paint and add more fur detailing around the edges of the possum to make it look more realistic, it will blend in with the ballpoint underneath and those little areas will act as shadows being cast by the fur. So it just looks more realistic without having this harsh edge of ink work. Okay, so since I went over the prep work and also the basic process of how I draw with ballpoint ink, let's get into the materials that I use. The pen that I'm using right now to do the majority of this whole ink work is the Bic Crystal Extra Smooth Ballpoint Pen Medium Point 1 Millimeter. And it's just in the shade black and it's basically those, you know those standard pens that you would just find in the hallway at school and you'd use it to write on your desk? I, that's, that's that pen. And I always used to doodle with it and it's always been tried and true. I love how it doesn't really, doesn't bleed that much. They're so cheap. I got a pack of 24 for like $6.50, something like that on Amazon. That's a good price. Very cheap. You get a lot of the pens and they're see-through. So you can see if you're running low on ink because sometimes if you're running low on ink and it starts skipping, ugh, that, that can be a hazard for your drawing. Not trying to scare you guys, but I'm just cautioning you of the dangers of low ink. <laughs> 
This is serious business, all right? <laughs> the ink in these kinds of pens in general are a lot more dry, which is what gives that light touch to it. It doesn't have an ink that's going to run all over the place. Like I said, it's more dry, so you can do lighter, smoother gradients that are a lot more delicate and precise. I do use more inky pens. I have one specifically that actually is a ballpoint one, but it's just a lot more of a wet ink. And I don't know what brand it is. I don't know what kind of pen it is. It is one I randomly found and I was like, that is a good pen. It's my favorite writing pen. However, you can find, you know, for any of these types of pens, these are very generic pens that you can find for super cheap literally anywhere. I'm pretty sure they sell these at the Dollar Tree too. Anyways, generally speaking, I use an inkier ballpoint pen that's a lot more wet. I use that as an outline for the entire floral border that I had going on. I just like the appearance of that. I like outlining it because the wetter ink is darker and a lot more crisp and I really like that for the outline. It just gives such a cool effect to the whole border. Now, something to keep in mind with the ink is that you need to use paper with it that's acid-free, that just prevents any color changing in the ink, as well as keeping it protected from the sun. So, what you wanna do with that is you can either use a spray fixative for ballpoint ink, and usually you can find these in like Michaels or any art supply store. It's like in a spray can in the painting aisle, and they have different finishes of this. It's a UV protectant that you can put over paper over your ballpoint drawings and it will protect it from the sun so that none of the sun rays can bleach or discolor the artwork you just did. Another thing you can do is if you're not sure if that fixative is going to work with other mediums that you used with the ink work. So in this case, I used a lot of watercolor and gouache. This should be fine on gouache, depending on the product that you're using. But just in case, another thing you can do if you don't want to use that and you're not sure like how that would interact is you can just frame it with UV protected glass or framing acrylic depending on how light or heavy you would want this to be. Acrylic is a lot lighter than glass so depending on the size you may want to have a heavier or lighter option for security but you can get these that are all protected in a UV protected film. They are more expensive but of course it's worth it because you are investing money into the longevity of your artwork. Another thing to know is that especially with the UV fixative, you're going to notice a slight yellow tinge and of course depending on the product that you use, they also have gloss, semi-gloss, and matte finishes. I really like a matte finish but I've tried satin before and it didn't mess up any of the paper or ballpoint. Definitely test out on a scrap piece of paper, by the way, before you decide to use the fixative. I would get the pen that you use, scribble on a scrap piece of paper, and then use the fixative and see how it reacts. I only say this because I've had some moments where I was a little risky. I was a little risky, and while it wound up fine, it was kind of like, mm, kind of wish I knew that before I sprayed my artwork with that, but you live and you learn. Now I'm here telling you. But yeah, you are going to notice a slight yellow tinge. Same with the framing glass or acrylic that's UV treated. There's a slight yellow, not yellow, more like a slight bronze kind of a finish to the appearance of it. You don't really notice it though. I don't know. I, I like using both for maximum protection of my artwork because I'm paranoid, but you don't know until you experiment and see them or if you're a scientist. Anyways, let's discuss the inspiration of why, why am I drawing this? Why am I doing daisies as the border? Why are there eyeballs? Why are there spiders and spider webs? Why are there ladybugs? Let's go over that. First of all, eyeballs and spiders. That's just, I would argue almost every single one of my paintings has an eyeball or spider in it somewhere. And why is that? Because I like it. Is there is there maybe a deeper philosophical meaning? Sure. Um, I think that's another video. And also, I think that requires more introspection on my part. 
because <laughs> I know some of the answer, but honestly, I, I like it. It resonates with me. Now, why is screaming possum? Well, I've been on a trash animals kick and do I know why? I don't know. I couldn't, I don't think I could tell you. Maybe it started with memes I would see all the time. I am heavy, heavy into raccoon and possum memes right now. If you scroll through my Instagram feed, the explore tab, it's, it's all raccoon, possum, existential crisis memes. Uh, what does that say about me? I don't know, but that's fine. I'm fine with that. That's cool. Uh, and now I think I got inspired by that and morphed it with this mushroom series I was doing. I was getting really into fungi and really into nature and I like the dark aspect of it while also having humor in artwork. I think art can be humorous and serious and deep at the same time and I think I've been really liking this type of painting because a lot of my artwork is very dark but lately i've been kind of healing my inner child through artwork that i would have liked to see when i was a kid because i was a weird kid it just makes me happy i think it has all of the elements in artwork that i like which is some deep whimsical meaning that has some humor in it and it's kind of dark and twisted too so that's how I got onto this whole trash animal series, but this piece specifically was inspired by an assignment I had made for the advanced painting class that I get to teach this semester. Basically, it was an illustration assignment where students had to grab random pieces of paper and create a story out of those pieces of paper. In the last video, I'll link which video I go over that whole thing. It talks about the whole assignment, but basically I decided to participate in the assignment and thought I would do an illustration too. And I got screaming idealist pastels, which I resonate with very deeply. <laughs> Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and I will see you next week. Bye!